مش السوق ترى في رماح ما حد يفتكر ان دي امريكا ذات الشعر اللي قدامي بقى تل الشارع بقى تل شيء لا يعلمه الا الله سبحانه وتعالى Authorities say over 1,000 houses collapsed in northwestern Khyber uh, Patukwa province. The rains also ruined crops and washed away roads, causing serious economic losses. Authorities say Khyber Patukwa has been hardest hit area since rain began last weekend. The weather department says the worst of the rainfall is over, but roads blocked by landslides will take longer to clear. One earthquake has jolted the Afghan capital of Kabul and surrounding areas on Sunday. The China Earthquake Network Center said the quake measured at 7.3 magnitude. Tremors have also been felt in parts of Pakistan and India. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries. We'll, of course, keep you updated as more information becomes available. Now for the very latest development, let's talk to our correspondent Shreta Bajaj in New Delhi. Shreta, 7.3 magnitude. That's got to be a big quake. What more can you tell us at this point? Uh, at the time of the quake, we were at the fifth floor of a building and we were seen aftershocks of the Nepal earthquake and the recent Pakistan earthquake here in New Delhi. But this was much, much bigger. Uh, we, could, we, could, we all had to rush down considering that this quake went on for a considerable period of time. After about 30 seconds, there were other aftershocks that came. usually go together but that's exactly what's been happening over the last week in the far northwestern part of our state overnight a 3.4 earthquake shook the area 37 miles southeast of Littlefield in Mojave County the Arizona Geological Survey says this is the biggest of 19 recent earthquakes most of them have been under 2.5 magnitude which is the smallest generally felt by Breaking news, four earthquakes have already rattled the Sooner State today. The USGS says three of those happened in Luther. The first one was a 3.4 magnitude quake around 1 a.m. The next two were within a minute of each other. One at 2.36 this morning, that was a 2.7. A minute later, a 3.1 magnitude started shaking. The other quake was a 3.4 earthquake in Helena. Authorities in southern India say more than 100 people have died in a blaze that started during a fireworks display at a Hindu temple. The blast occurred at the temple in Kerala state early on Sunday morning. Police say at least 105 people are dead and more than 300 injured. About 10,000 local residents and tourists had gathered to mark the start of the Hindu New Year. Police say a spark appears to have ignited a stack of fireworks inside the temple. 
They say the explosion was loud enough to be heard more than a kilometer away. We are, we are giving all uh, support uh, to the in, injured people. Police are investigating whether the temple had permission to use fireworks for the festival. They are also trying to find out if appropriate safety measures were taken. A number of accidents have occurred at Hindu festivals where fireworks and firecrackers are commonly used. This is what's left after a shed storing fireworks exploded and started a blaze at a section of Patinga Devi Temple in Kerala. The blast was so strong some parts of the temple complex roof caved in and others were blown away. features of the Kuiper Belt, a field of icy debris beyond the orbit of Neptune, can be understood if the solar system possesses an additional ninth planet that resides well beyond the orbits of the known planets. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet also very distant in the solar system, keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. I went from... black hole discovery with some massive implications for the study of space. RT Simone Del Rosario tells us what makes this near record breaking black hole so unique. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the sheer beauty of this super massive black hole. And yes, super massive is the technical term. This NASA image is computer simulated to show a black hole at the core of a galaxy. NASA says the gravity distorts space around it like a funhouse mirror. The spectacular light are stars skimming by. Now, scientists discovered this new supermassive black hole called NGC 1600 using the Hubble Space Telescope and the Gemini Telescope in Hawaii. 
It's 200 million light years from Earth and is as massive as 17 billion suns put together. Now that's near the record, but not record breaking. The biggest supermassive black hole we know of has the mass of 21 billion suns. But what is shocking about this new discovery is where in space they found it. It's like seeing a building as tall as the Empire State Building in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming. Scientists expect to see massive black holes in rare crowded clusters of hundreds of galaxies. The largest is found in the Coma Cluster, which is made up of about a thousand galaxies. But this new supermassive black hole was found in a very small group of galaxies, about 20 or so. Now, smaller groups like this are 50 times more abundant in space than large clusters like Coma. It's leading scientists to wonder, is this the tip of the iceberg? Are supermassive black holes more common than originally thought? What is for sure is that researchers will be searching the skies to find out. И лайнер берет курс домой. Тем же маршрутом недели ранее на родину отправились. Iran unveils its latest nuclear achievements, including a nuclear waste management site in the central city of Karabakh. با حول و قوه الهی آغاز بفرمایید علا برکت الله launching of the site has completed Iran's nuclear fuel cycle. The country has also unveiled two new domestically made centrifuges used for the health sector as well as nuclear fuel assemblies equipped with testing devices for power reactors. The nation has marked the 10th anniversary of the National Nuclear Technology Day. A ceremony was held in Tehran during which President Hassan Rouhani delivered a speech. Rouhani hailed Iran's nuclear deal with the P5 plus 1 group of countries as an opportunity for the nation's progress. The president also said Iran is not a threat to any country. Rouhani added the Iranian military might is aimed at safeguarding the nation's own security and also that of its neighbors. Iran's Prime Minister spokesman says Tehran and Moscow have started implementing the first phase of the S-300 missile system delivery. Well, I already said that the new agreements have been made between the two countries for uh, putting this uh, delayed contract uh, into implementation. The date was postponed, actually, new agreements have been made, and they're going to be 
implemented. Now I'm informing the public that the first uh, phase of this contract uh, has already started and on the basis of the timetable, the new one, but by the end of the contract, the, the various phases will be completed. The international military exercise has been launched in the Middle East waters. The U.S. Navy is leading the maneuvers. Uh, 34 maritime nations from all over the world will be taking part. Eight countries will be providing assets at sea. A further seven will be sending bespoke teams to, co to contribute to discrete tasks such as visit, board search and seizure teams or diving operations with the remainder providing expertise in the form of staff officers to integrate into the exercise command group. The military drill started on Monday with a symposium in Bahrain where the U.S. Navy's 5th Fleet is based. Part of the exercises are being held in the Persian Gulf waters. The U.S. Navy says the maneuvers are aimed at protecting trade routes from possible threats such as Daesh and Al-Qaeda terrorist groups. Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, Vice Admiral Kevin Donegan says the exercises have been designed to stop the terrorists from causing disruption to shipping in international waters. Palestinians have placed signs at the Temple Mount warning that they plan to smash any security cameras that are found on the site. The cameras were planned to be used as a part of a Jordanian initiative to calm tensions at the site. But now the Arab state is saying Muslim worshippers won't be filmed. Palestinian President Abbas, Jordanian King Abdullah, and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu had all agreed to the initiative, although Jordan and Israel have continued to disagree about where to put the cameras. Jordan is in control of the mosque and only wants cameras placed in common areas to show alleged violations by Israeli security forces. Israel also wants cameras placed inside the mosque to show Muslim worshippers reportedly hoarding rocks and weapons for clashes with Israeli forces. People have been killed and 53 wounded when Philippine soldiers battled about 120 Muslim rebels linked to the Islamic State on a southern Philippine island. The 10-hour assault happened on the island of Basilan, led by terrorist group Abu Sayyaf leader Isnilan Hapilan. There was no immediate statement from the group. However, they have posted videos on social media sites pledging allegiance to Islamic State militants in Iraq and Syria. Breaking news coming in uh, this hour. Poisoned gas is reportedly uh, uh, used against Kurdish forces in the city of Aleppo. Well, this video you can see was posted online. A cloud of yellow smoke can be seen rising from the affected zone. The Kurdish-held district of Sheikh Maksud is partially surrounded by rebel-held areas and reports suggest the chemical attack came from there. A local journalist on the ground confirmed to us that uh, toxic elements were used. The attack happened at midday on Thursday. The gas caused suffocation, which confirms that poisonous substances were used. Four people have fallen victim to this chemical attack. With peace talks due to resume in Geneva this week, the scene on the ground in Syria is anything but peaceful. New amateur video appears to show rebel groups battling Syrian army forces outside Aleppo. The city is under the sights of the Russian Air Force and the Syrian military, according to reports. The Syrian Prime Minister was quoted saying the forces are preparing a joint operation to take Aleppo. The statement comes as an opposition official said a ceasefire was on the verge of collapsing. Both sides have blamed the other for the breaches. This upsurge in fighting in Aleppo marks the most significant challenge yet to the deal. Macedonia, where police there have used tear gas to disperse hundreds of refugees from the Edemini border in Greece. At least 260 refugees have been hurt in the violence. Well, 
Police fired tear gas at some 500 refugees who had gathered at the fence. Macedonian officials say the violence started after a large group of refugees residing at a makeshift camp in Adamini stormed toward the fence. More than 10,000 refugees have been stranded around the border since the Balkan route was closed in February. Refugees demand the border to be reopened to allow them to continue their way into Europe. Germany says it has registered more than 181,000 asylum applications in the first quarter of this year. It was more than double the applications from the same period of last year. The big jump was due to most of the over 1 million migrants who arrived in Germany last year were the first registered at shelters where they waited for months before filing for asylum. However, Interior Minister Thomas de Maizière said even as the number of asylum seekers dropped in March amid a shutdown of the Balkan route through southeastern Europe, new routes may emerge. De Maizière added that refugee registration centers and shelters for new arrivals should be kept open for now. Extensive and meticulous, the Guardia Civil, Spain's law enforcement agency, inspects each car that passes through this security checkpoint. Every day, some 25,000 people cross here between Fauta, a Spanish enclave in Africa, and Morocco. The majority does so legally. But each year, thousands of migrants cross over into Spain illegally. The number of migrants and refugees reaching Spain's two African enclaves jumped significantly last year, up 55% on 2014. But with the eastern Mediterranean route becoming even more treacherous and protected, authorities here are preparing for even greater numbers. The numbers are on the rise again. More than 16,000 migrants crossed the Mediterranean Sea to Italy in the first quarter of 2016, up from 10,000 during the same period last year. And the fear is the new migrant deal between the EU and Turkey will force more to try to make this journey. Many end up at centres like this one in Rome, run by the Red Cross. On the wall, a drawing by six-year-old Kia from Eritrea. He and his family survived the journey and now live in Germany. This man from Sudan, who wants to remain anonymous, arrived by boat from Libya just last week. The uh, journey is very hard. Like few, some people, they are crying inside the boat, no space. You just sit down like this, no any space, no any movement. You understand? The board just full, no any space. Centres like this one across Italy are braced for an increase in the number of migrants arriving. A federal judge has ruled that in 2014, Los Angeles County violated the California Constitution when it added a Christian cross to the official seal. The judge dismissed arguments that the change was to promote historical accuracy. The ruling means the county will have to go back to an older version of the seal that does not include the cross. The good word on the job has an Indiana State trooper out of work tonight. That's right. ISP has fired senior trooper Brian Hamilton, accusing him of pulling people over to preach the gospel. Nine on your side, Evan Millward has brand new information in this case that traces back here to the tri-state. There are questions you expect when you get pulled over. Do you know how fast you are going? Can I see your license and registration? But what about have you been saved? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Well, my first reaction to it is it violates the separation of church and state. He's advocating uh, a religious position, 
and there's supposed to be a complete separation between that. You should not be able And that's what the Indiana ACLU says has happened not once, but twice with Trooper Brian Hamilton, once in the tri-state. And most recently, a Fayette County woman named Wendy Pyle says Hamilton invited her to church and gave her directions to get there. I mean, he's certainly entitled to go out and advocate his position, but not as an employee of the state and particularly not when he's acting on duty. First Amendment attorney Lewis Serkin isn't involved in the case, but believes something more needed to happen after the first incident. Nine on Your Side covered that lawsuit in October 2014. When a woman posted on Facebook, she got a warning and a how-to guide on being a Christian. Also, from Brian Hamilton. In documents we got from ISP, Hamilton was put in counseling after that incident. Awesome, guys. Brian, what do you think? All these people came out here today for you. They came out for the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't come out for me. They came out to exalt the name of Jesus. And they know what the truth is. And they know that the only way that anybody can be changed is through the name of Jesus. And they know that they need to be obedient to Christ. When Christ tells them to do something. As a soldier for Jesus, they're going to stand up. And they answered the call. God told them to come out here today. Nobody else told them. They answered the call and they came out here to support the name of Jesus and uplift his name and tell people there's only one way and that's the name of Jesus. That's through, God, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can be the Father but by me. And when I got saved three years ago, it changed my life. And I know what you're all down here for and I can't really comment on the allegations of the, of the state police and I was a former state trooper. But I always said after I got saved, I said I, I work for the state, but all off me, I'm a soldier for Jesus.